Hey guys, Jeff with Area North 40. I've done a few different videos now. Uh, I've done a bicycle video that hopefully you've already seen. And I think I'm gonna do another one real quick. This bike here that I got from a buddy. I'm gonna go ahead and uh, see what it takes to get this thing apart. I've already squirted it down with some, uh, uh, this stuff right here. Crawl Penetrant. We like the Penetrant. So. I'm gonna see how hard it is to get this thing apart with all the rusty crustiness, but uh, I'll set the camera up on this little tripod here and uh, get to it. All right, see if we can get the front wheel off first. That's usually the eat. Okay, well, right off the bat, I just noticed that we've got different size nuts on this thing, but that's okay. Because these wheels are actually from a different bike. Um, they are not, this is a Schwinn, legit Chicago made Schwinn. And uh, these wheels are probably from a Huffy, I'm guessing. Hey, first thing went nice and easy. definite difference between patina and actual rust. Rust is the enemy. All right. So this is one of the reasons I even wanted this bike. Look at that cool slick tire there. It's a little weathered and cracked, but it's still cool enough it's worth it. A cracked tire is not the end of the world on an older bike like this when you're just gonna be cruising them and you're not gonna be like doing big jumps or anything like that. Uh, the tube is what holds all the air on the insides. And this thing looks like it used to have a red line in there. That is actually really awesome. I'm gonna see if I can uh, bring that back. And by bring it back, I mean get a red Sharpie and color it in. You know, I probably should be using gloves while I do this, but I never do. Don't do it the way I do it exactly. Be a little smarter about certain things because you know, rust ain't really good. Getting rust inside of you, well, it's just not good. Well, that's a pleasant surprise. Seat posts are notoriously bad. They get rusty down inside the tube and they will hold. And I've had, well, I had one that I actually ended up just ruining it, trying to get it out, but I've had some really tough ones. And thankfully this one was actually pretty easy. This thing's actually really coming apart pretty easily. I mean, I haven't had to uh, think about editing any curse words out yet, so that's always a good sign. No decals left on it, I don't think. I mean, it's it's kind of rusty, but it's I can still see all the red, but I don't see any kind of thing saying Schwinn. Oh, wait, I see the beginning of a letter right there. So I'll try and carefully take the rust off and see if I can see the remnants of the original decal, um, but probably not. Um, just try and bring some of the color back but it'll look cool that is the bearing collar it's supposed to have these balls, little ball bearings, in these little spots here. And uh, they have all fallen out. It's just literally missing material. So not gonna reuse these. Yeah, same story on this side. Holy cow. Holy cow. <laughs> right here, you can see in here, these things are held in there they're in, totally in the wrong spot. The ball bearing is supposed to be kind of resting in this little cap and these little tabs here, they kind of clamp down and separate them. These have worked their way up into that kind of a spot. It's held in there like a little P. I've not seen that before. These are probably the original bearings, um, which is always cool if you can use original stuff if they're still in good shape but yeah there's no bringing these ones back 
but I will save some of these uh, little ball bearings because the balls themselves are like a super hardened steel. Um, they're very rarely going to be damaged. It's just the, the race or the collar, whatever it's called. Type in the comments if you know the right terminology um, because I clearly don't. So anyway, it's out. This might take specialist equipment. All right, let's aim you down so you can see what I'm doing here. So the idea behind this is to get this part to turn and this part to not turn. Okay. Carefully. And it worked. Ding, ding, ding. Winning. That's how you win. That's that. Almost done. I might need the, uh, I wasn't asking tool for this part too. All right, I'm just gonna get this and I'll come back to it. So the problem is it's so rusted that it just rounded that. It's supposed to be a nice sharp corner like that and I've just rounded it off. Can you see that? I think I'm gonna leave that. Uh, I'm gonna soak it in some of that uh, penetrating oil and go eat some dinner and maybe I'll come back and uh, work at it a little bit more. Okay, I think I had a little bit of a breakthrough. Hmm mullet's looking epic so had some dinner kind of reorganized a little bit um got a little bit different setup here got the frame kind of set up on this uh what's supposed to be a horseshoe pit but it's really just kind of a mess in my yard but uh it's by putting the fork over that and this extra board in there that is holding it steady while i give it a little push with the wrench and uh little persuasion all right now i will uh, admit you're not going to see some kind of magic here i actually already broke it free um but i was having such a difficult time with it that uh i was I, it actually stripped it out and so i had to fight it a little bit and i just didn't turn the camera back on but it is now turning as you can see Believe it or not, these bearings are pretty rusty looking, but I'm gonna clean them up and see how they look and I re-grease them and, you know, they they still feel pretty solid. So as long as the, the you know, the, the metal flanges there and everything are not weakened or, or structurally compromised and the bearings can clean up these will actually be fine i think um again this is not a bike i'm going to be riding any kind of you know long distances i'm just i just get it good enough to you know cruise it around the cul-de-sac there she is there's the fork there's the frame i'm gonna leave the uh, kickstand in there. there's no real benefit of pulling that out um but she's all done i can get it cleaned up and uh put it back together in the way I want. Anyway, there we go. I think that that's gonna do it for this one. That's the teardown of the uh, rusty stingray. So, um, in the last one that I did of my daughter's bike, um, I, one of the comments that I got, I had a little conversation with my friend Angie. Hi Angie and Shay. And uh, they really enjoyed the video and she sent me a message about a bike that she has and uh, but they're in Arizona now they've moved to Arizona pretty long ways from here and she was considering like shipping her bike up to me to have me work on it which I just kind of feel is pretty impractical but what I did tell her that I would do is kind of show her some of the stuff that I do um, you know just the simple stuff to uh, clean some rust up off of rusty parts her bike actually was really clean and didn't have very much rust on it at all nothing like what I've got here um, but I'm gonna just kind of go over that just a little bit um, and uh, show you what I do. 
I've got this little razor blade. This one's kind of roach. It's just for showing purposes. So on a rusty part, if it's really rusty like these handlebars here, um, you know, you can, if you take the razor blade and put it at a pretty sharp angle, no pun intended, um, and just kind of work it past over the chrome and the rust, it'll take a lot of that thick rust right off. And uh, I'm hoping you can see this, what I'm doing here. Just gonna do a little section here. Now these bars are actually really pretty roach, so I'm probably not gonna do the entire bars. Um, I'm not gonna get them all the way to a high shine. Um, if the chrome underneath is good quality chrome, it will actually be able to be saved pretty well. Um, another thing I do, I didn't bring any WD-40 out here, um, but uh, once I've kind of gotten the really rough stuff with the razor, then I'll take this steel wool that's uh, dot zero, 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 yeah, quad zero, there it is. One of these days I'll say stuff right. Anyway, I'll uh, rub that over the chrome pretty good and it'll take up a lot of the stuff that the razor missed. But it, like I said, if the chrome is good quality, um, it'll hold up, it won't scratch the chrome too bad. Uh, and then if you really feel like getting a high polish out of it, you can always do you know, some polishing compounds with a polishing wheel or whatever. I'm not that worried about that. Um, but uh, so anything that's chrome, you can do that with, you know, and you don't have to really ram down and you just give a little bit of pressure. Um, like I said, sometimes I'll squirt some WD-40 on it to kind of help it. Um, it's like a catalyst or something. I don't know. Um, so that's these bars. And I don't know if you can tell, but even just that little bit I did there already looks better. And uh, But I'm not going to use these bars because they are far more roached than these bars right here. These ones are a little bit better shape. Let's see what happens when I do the same thing on these. Now, there might be people watching this that have different ideas and a different way to go about removing rust, and they probably have better ideas and ways. Um, this is what I've done, it works for me. If I were working on a, like a really high-end BMX from the 80s that was chrome, I'd probably do something a little bit different. This is just trying to knock the rust down. I'm not trying to make these things perfect. It's an old bike that it's going on. Um, but you now that looks even better than those other ones. These bars aren't quite as bad. But I'm not gonna use those ones either. I am gonna use the gooseneck off that. Yay. These ones are bars that I already had. And so they are uh, in a lot better shape. They have just a couple little spots that I'll clean up. But these ones are gonna go on the bike that I'm about to build. Just do a tiny bit of cleanup here and there. And uh, that'll be that. All right, that's as good as I need them to be. They're pretty shiny already. I don't know if you'll be able to see this on the camera, but if you look right and through here, it actually, I think that's where it says it, it actually says Schwinn right there. And uh, so these are legitimate Schwinn handlebars. And what they put these on is uh, a little bit smaller bikes. The junior model came with these, the slick chick came with these, and probably a couple others. All right, the wheels. Angie's bike, she had the most rust on her wheels in the pictures that I saw. So it's the same thing, you know, you just, nice and easy at a really good angle with the with the razor blade and just nice and easy go over it you don't have to put a whole lot of pressure on it just enough to get in there and get right up to the little spokes all right can you see that see that came out really nice i mean just that little section the rest of the rim looks about the same. There's another spot over here that looks a little bit more chunky, so that might uh, take a little bit more effort, but um, but I think that this rim will clean up, and I mean, it rolls nice, it's good. There's, there's nothing wrong with the rim. The tire is, uh, 
the cords are showing. So that tire is unfortunately no good. It's too bad too because it actually has a good amount of tread on it. But just like with a car tire, even if the tread looks good, that doesn't mean the tire is good. If it's too dry rotted and ruined, don't drive on it. Well, if you're riding a bicycle and you get going at speed and you have a blowout, you can wipe out and smash your face on the ground. Nobody wants that. But as it happens, I have another set here. So these ones here are really nice. It's got some cracking there, but it's not nearly as bad. It's not splitting out. I got this at a swap meet. I actually paid like, I don't know, 10, 15 bucks for the tire. Um, but anyway, it'll look cool on this bike that I'm doing right now. And uh, that is this bike you saw at the beginning of the video. Um, so I'm gonna get this degreaser and just squirt it down and, and clean it up the best I can. And, uh, and then I'll assemble it all. So I don't think you need to watch me uh, run a rag up and down this thing. So, trust me, I'm going to run some stuff to get all this stuff cleaned up. I'm not gonna paint this one. I'm gonna keep the original color. It's kind of a, almost like a brick red. Um, and uh, build myself a little junior. got excited for a moment but wasn't uh, what I was hoping I'm gonna show you something real close here and that right there is the serial number I don't know if you can see that gosh the glare is right on it of course but I don't know anyway that says JK5 one four five nine six or nine eight something like that anyway um, I thought it was a J4 and uh, that would have been pretty cool because it would mean that I was mistaken about this it's not a junior it's actually a 64 stingray which is the uh, they came out in mid-year 63 so 64 is the first full year and uh, it would have been like a September or October of 64 bike meaning very old um, as it is it's still old um, but <laughs> The paint on the letter um, kind of filled in part of the letter. It was not a four, it was a K, which means it's a September of 74. So still cool, but not as cool as if it was a 64. So anyway, um, I'm cleaning this uh, paint up with uh, this degreaser stuff and this and you know what it's actually coming up pretty decently in a few spots a couple spots are kind of thin so i got to be careful not to rub too hard but um i think i'm actually going to get uh, some of this steel wool sos style that's got the soap in it so i think i might actually uh switch over to this um because uh some of this is just really caked on uh grime and it's not stuff you, you don't i mean you can do the razor blade trick on the painted area as well but you run more of a risk of scratching the paint more than it already is um it's not like chrome it doesn't glide over it as smoothly i was doing it very lightly and uh i got it but in a couple of the weird spots it, it did scratch the paint a little bit which i'm not worried about it's an old bike um but anyway i'm gonna switch over to this and uh see if i can get it even more clean and uh bring that red out because already um, you know, this is what it started out like. You can see just how grimy it is and just a little bit of cleaning. I don't know if you can tell, but that's actually coming up more red and then up here even better. So I'm going to go ahead and get that stuff and see if I can get this thing to pop pretty good. think so far it's the other side you can see how crusty that is over here 
I'd already done some of this with just the, the steel wool, but I didn't do it with this. And then uh, this side here, you can see down here, that actually came out quite a bit nicer. Through here is better. So I'm gonna stick with that and might even spit on it, I don't know. So I cleaned up the chain guard and it came out pretty nice too looks i mean it's right along with the bike it's got the same amount of old rust but it cleaned up just as well and it looks pretty good um, but i'm a little bit torn because i have another bike that is essentially the same color that it would also look good on and i actually like that bike a little better um, this one i'm probably going to end up selling uh, maybe back to the guy i got it from uh, once he sees how nice it turned out because he likes the rusty stuff, but I mean, you saw in the beginning, I mean, stuff wouldn't even turn. And now it turns. So he might actually want it back, you never know. Either way, I might want to, uh, I want to, might want to hang on to this chain guard because I've got another chain guard, but it doesn't have this little close. The other chain guard I have doesn't have that cool little uh, fin, almost like a 57 Chevy. Um, it just kind of, chops off at the same angle as the frame and it's the wrong color it's the one that came on my daughter's bike and uh, so i got to paint it i doubt i'd ever get a color match close enough so i'd probably just paint it black because i'm lazy but i might just steal this one i don't know we'll see all right put a little grease on the uh, seat poster Oops. One last thing to show you. Um, I think I'll go ahead and get the bike down. Okay, so one of the things that uh, I noticed on this bike was when I got the thing, the grips were on the handlebars thusly. Can you see that? No, you cannot. Okay, thusly, yes. See how it's all kind of blackish? blackish but they are red on the other side so i did this whole thing where i took them off and i'll do it slow so you can keep up <laughs> look at that Whew. it worked okay so just got to smack those on there and it'll have red grips like it should all right, the last thing, the last piece of the puzzle, I haven't put the chain guard on, obviously, but I showed you that. Um, the pedals. It should have pedals like this one here, okay? And I think this one might have actually come off of it, but this one here looks the same, right? Wrong, you're wrong. Sorry, didn't mean to get upset about it. Pedal, pedal. They are not the same size. That bugs me. They look the same, but they're not the same. They look the same, but they're not the same. So I can put them on there and have a mismatched pedal set because I cannot seem to find another one of either of these. And it is a left and right thing. If you remember from the other video, you probably can't see it, but the threads, they are different from each other. One of them threads backwards and the other one threads normal. I do have this set of rat trap style pedals and they're not what's supposed to be on here um, these came off of that enduro 8 that i talked about in a previous video there's nothing wrong with them they're just not correct but i think that they will be fine placeholders and i'm going to put these on there for right now until i can find another set that uh, suits it better and uh, so i'm going to get that done but anyway that's essentially the bike. I gotta pound those uh, grips on and uh, probably push the seat up in the back, down in the front, get a chain for it, tighten everything up, put air in the tires, and I'll give it a ride. That'll be that for the moment, and uh, you should see me riding the bike around next. Well, there we have it. Little Junior is all done.
Okay. <laughs> Just love it when neighbors uh, pull up right when you're doing a video out in the middle of your street. How dare they? Anyway, back to the backyard. Um, here she is. All done. Looks pretty good. I don't know if you could tell from the uh, beginning of the video. It looks so much better. That's awesome. Anyway, when it was all, or when I first got it, this thing was pretty much just, you could barely tell it was red. It was just rust colored. But now the red actually pops pretty good. Yes, it could be taken to another level. Um, I'm not the one that's gonna do that. Uh, if somebody else wants to do that, good on them. But I think it looks a heck of a lot better. I mean, you know, the thing of it is, is there, like this little chrome piece here, there's a lot of pitting in that. You can only do so much with that. That could be changed out. That bearing cut could be changed out, but I don't have extra ones of those, so there's nothing wrong with them. They're just pitted, and I can't get them to really shine up any better than what they did, but this is a patina bike. It's kind of supposed to look like this, um, at least to my mind. Not sure if this is the end of the road for it, but it is the end of the road for me working on this thing. So I've done it as far as I want to do it. Um, I'm gonna talk to the guy that I got it from, see if he has any interest in getting it back now that it's actually rideable. It was so uh, roached out, the bearings were literally falling out if you remember. I think I caught that on video. Um, it's got new bearings, we're new to it, uh, all greased up, everything works, it's smooth, it rides nice, and uh, so maybe he'll want it back now that it's uh, actually a rider. In the meantime though, um, if you like this video, please hit the like button, uh, subscribe to the channel, there's gonna be more like this, and car videos, and all the stuff that I like to do. So hopefully you like it, and uh, you come along with me. All right, stay tuned, thanks for watching.